Ayan, ayan. Kamusta naman kayo dyan, mga kameta? Thankfully, thank God, medyo bumalik ng konti yung boses natin. Kaya kahit pa paano, nagawa natin yung mga obligations natin today. Obligations. But naging, naging Australian. Australian might. Um, uh, thank you so much, guys, again, for your prayers and love. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the improvement we're expecting with Lola did not exactly take place today, but we're still... Uh, praying uh, uh, for, for 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 God's blessings and 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 thank you so much for your continued praise and support. Para kahit pa paano, hopefully we can uh, transfer Lola out of ICU soon. Ang tagal niya sa ICU, kawawa talaga si Lola and all of these things, you know, on her body, the discomfort, the stress, and obviously you know Lola is dealing with a lot of uh, difficulties on multiple levels. But thank God, thank God. One thing that uh, I'm always very grateful for is her strong mind, her presence of mind, her fighting spirit. So, ang laki talaga yung ating... Uh, ako, ang laki talaga ng utang na loob ko kay Lola no? when it comes to fighting spirit. I think Lola um, is one of the reasons why nakikita niyo na talagang... Well, yes, aminado, minsan masyadong patolero, minsan masyadong... Uh, minsan masyadong pasaway, medyo masyadong pugnacious if I can put it. But I a person, I'm very indebted to Lola because I think that that fighter spirit in... Not only me, but my cousins among others talaga comes from Lola. So thank you so much again for your support. And we're hoping that, God willing, inshallah, by tomorrow, things uh, on Sabbath day, tomorrow, things will move in a, a better direction, hopefully. Because uh, today, things didn't turn out exactly as I, as we're hoping. Um, uh, you know, she had to do her dialysis in the morning and in the evening. There were other uh, concerns. Um, but we're still hoping, fingers crossed, that tomorrow, hopefully, Um, you can transfer her out of ICU. So thank you so much again for your support and for the intercession of, um, you know, the, all the good angels and the good spirits and souls out there. Thank you so much again. And God willing, no, inshallah, things will move in the right direction, especially on Sabbath day tomorrow, which is very holy and, and, and special, of course, for especially people like me. No? Um, so today was a, also a very special day when it comes, guys, to um, yung elections natin. Lahat ng mga bigati ng pangalan. Lahat ng mga... Heroes, no? Uh, lahat ng mga ating mga bayani pagdating sa progressive politics. And most importantly, great guys, amazing guys, wonderful guys. Yeah, hindi, pa, hindi pa rin 100% bosses natin kaya hindi natin makuha si Trump. <clears throat> I'm not also sure makuha natin si Cynthia pa. Bakit? <laughs> hindi pa rin. But kahit pa paano, interesting day, wonderful day, amazing day, great guys, they say. Ayan, si Bitag. Sorry, sabi ko Bintag. O pwede rin, Ben, Bin, Bin. Anyway, si Sir Bit, Bitag. Ayan, really made it clear that the prospect of T3, Tatlong Tulfo sa Senado, is, is very much over the horizon unless something crazy happens. Ako naman for me. Sobrang interesting itong elections eh, dahil sa daming tumatakbo. No? So, um, actually, ang dami natin options sa election na ito. Sa isang banda, ang dami mga trapos na tumatakbo. Sobrang daming trapos. Traditional politicians, galing sa mga dynasties, ang dami nila. And actually, kung nilagay mo dyan, more than 12 by far. So, for sure, you're gonna see some major upsets. Pagdating sa Senate race, and who knows, some of the LGUs. Kasi kung labanan ng trapo versus trapo, di ba? Um, for sure, at least one trapo side is gonna lose. So, so we may see some major upsets. If you look at some of the surveys, actually, uh, Camille Villar, alangan. Hindi ko sinisabi na trapo sila. Hindi ko sinisabi. Kasi nga, sabi ni Camille, di ba? But new politics. She wants to bring new politics. Kasi millennial daw siya, so automatically. Dahil sa sipag at syaga ng kanyang pamilya at syaga mga lessons ni kuya, ni mommy, si daddy na ginawang ano yung senado. <laughs> Ibang klase. Dahil akala natin barangay lang ginagawang ganun ng mga pamilya ngayon kahit senado. No? So it, it is not impossible. No? I think it's even more likely than not that either Abby Binay or even Camille Villar may have a hard time. In fact, only in one survey. And that's the weird SWS survey. The first time I can say weird because... Ang layo na itong, itong SWS survey niyan dun sa dalawang other authoritative surveys, especially yung surveys ng Okta and, of course, uh, the more established survey of Pulse Asia. Um, you see more overlaps between the Pulse Asia survey and Okta survey and, and, and the SWS survey. But nevertheless, the SWS survey is interesting because, sabi ko ha, katulad na makikita niyo sa mga analysis na na-post natin ngayon sa, uh, sa YouTube, uh, na-post natin ito yung base sa mga R&R &R and RRM and sarili natin analysis. 
malaki din ang posibilidad na ma, uh, ma um, derecho inodoro. <laughs> derecho inodoro ang DDS team. Because bato, alanganin na talaga. Bongo, sobrang alanganin sa SWS survey at least. Always doing much better in the other surveys. And digong, either alanganin in some surveys, but not so much in SWS, but alanganin na tumakbo. I mean, I won't be surprised that digong doesn't run at all. At kung umuasa lang sila ng si Buster or Pulong, those guys are not even within the range of competitiveness. At ang dami-dami pang guys uh, na mga iba-iba na pwedeng pumasok dito. Ayan. Okay. Yeah. Ayan. Behave yourself, ha? Ah. Talagang block kayo kagad. Umayos kayo dyan. I'm not messing around. Okay. Balikan natin ito. Um, kala talaga ng mga trolls na ito na dude, you're, you're not gonna get away on my platforms, my friends. Okay. Going back to this. Um, so, ang laki ng posibilidad na una, mainodoro maderecho inodora ang mga DDS. Baka isa lang makapasok sa kanya or walang-wala doon sa Senate. At lalong mga ano sila, they're gonna be demolished sa LGU level. Dahil pagdating sa LGU politics, mga ganon, I honestly, how many governors, vice governors, how many mayors do you think the Duterte can win? Maybe in Davao or something like that. I don't know. But even Mig Zubiri might also challenge Duterte for Davao. So we don't know. Interesting. So maybe in Davao, they might get away with here and there. But on the national scale, guys, medyo good luck talaga sa kanila. <laughs> so malaking chance na ma-ocho, uh, but sorry, um, ma-derecho inodoro ang mga DDS sa race na yan. Malaki din ang chance na some of the big dynasties like Binice or Villiers might suffer an upset in the race na yan dahil ang daming tumatakbo. At ang daming tumatakbo na galing din sa traditional politicians, kung pera-pera lang, kung popularity lang, nako may money Pacquiao ka na dyan. Uh, meron ka ng bong revilya dyan. Ako, dami mga ganyang characters dyan. Uh, hindi tayo nagka, nagkakulang. Andyan na rin yung kaibigan natin si Mark Gamboa. The vlogger, extraordinary disruptor. Diba? Parang, okay, I could see the skepticism of people. Parang, okay, alright, okay. But anyway, guys, ba- let's be nice. RRM to, team RRM yan. So support muna tayo. I just hope hindi ma-nuisan si, si Mark. I hope he comes up with some machinery and support base in the coming weeks para... Um, Tuloy-tuloy yung campaign niya. Um, the good thing naman with Mark, in fairness to me, is naikinig siya sa mga progressives. Naikinig siya sa mga katulad natin na medyo siguro may konting kaalaman ng kahit kapano uh, sa broad political landscape. So, let's see. So, there's a very big chance, guys, dito sa election na yun, maraming mga malalaking pangalan ay mainodoro. Including mga DDS. Ay baka mga, um, you know, uh, derecho inodoro. Uh, sa election na yan. Basa at least sa mga earlier service that we're seeing. Now, that doesn't mean tapos ng laban. Malayo pang elections. A lot can happen between now and then. But if we compare the situation of Duterte at this point in the race ahead of 2019 elections, and layo. Even compared to at this point in the race in the 2020 elections, ahead of 2020 elections, malayo. So, ang layo nila sa 2018. Ang layo nila sa 2021. Uh, alanganin talaga sila. And it remains to be seen once the ICC comes up with uh, something along the lines of warrant of rest. Okay, excited. Yung mga ka-DDS natin, huwag kayo excited masyado, okay? Hinintay pa nga namin yung mga polvoronic video nyo, eh, di ba? Anong, anong petya na? So, bago niya akong singilin dun sa September ICC na yan, hindi ko na mahawak yung ICC. Chill lang kayo. Papunta tayo dyan. Huwag kayo excited. Ang tanong lang dyan is, once the ICC comes up with it, is that gonna help the Duterte or especially Bato na medyo alanganin or not? Is that gonna convince the Gong um, may replacement candidate pang pwede mangyari or not, di ba? So, interest, magkakaalaman talaga guys, magkakaalaman talaga kung talaga malaking chance na mainodora mga Dutertes. Now, let's go to tail of the <laughs> Kasi may UFC na mame, eh. So, tail of the tape. Yan, let's talk about this guys. Mauna tayo. So, signpost tayo. Dalawang pag-usapan natin dito. You can say two sides of the same coin. You can say two different versions. You can talk about multiverse. Ito. Pag-usapan natin si Ben Tulfo. I, th- I think he had a very interesting um, introduction, intervention, whatever you want to call it kanina. Naalala ko naman si paring Lelo I Claudio. <laughs> I been a warehouse. Totoo pala yung accent na ginaya ni Lelo. Talagang American. American accent. Great guy. Amazing guy. So, and pangalawa guys, pag-usapan natin si Ma'am Lenny Robredo. In fact, there were two major things with Ma'am Lenny over the past 24 hours or so. One, 
Eto na, finally tatakbo na siya and klarong-klaro na ngayon. Wala nang bahay na duda. Tatakbo siya bilang mayor ng Naga City and she has already unveiled the Team Naga. Team Pink, Team, you know, yung original na Dilaw, hindi Dilawan, but original na Dilaw, and Team Tunay na Pagbabago. Positibong Pagbabago, right? And more importantly, uh, Lenny also made some intervention or clarification also about 2028, which I think is very, very important as our discussions about prospects for opposition in the years to come gains more poignancy. Una-una, balikan natin si Sir Ben Tulfo. Okay, so kanina abang uh, hintay pa natin ng bagay-bagay, edit edit ko yan, kinaw cap cap cut cap cut natin dun sa bummer. I mean, uh, uh, yung isang phone natin na may TikTok at na wala na akong tiwala kung safe ito or hindi. But anyway, so ito guys, um, it is official as... Uh, Ovijaleza, Ovijaleza, um, Ben Tulfo, Ben Tulfo. Actually, I'll, I'll be honest guys, never ako nakinig kay Ben Tulfo ng matagalan. Ito yung first time talaga pinakinggan, pinakinggan ko siya ng matagalan. At uh, first time na makikita ko siya outside his comfort zone, which is yung kanyang show na Bitag. Bitag, hindi Bentag, Pintag. Okay, hindi Bintag, Pitag. Alright, ito na. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Tagalog eh, English o Tagalog na lang uh, Mas kilala sa pangalan Bitag Bitag is Ben Tulfo Or Ben Bitag Tulfo Yun I'm a journalist by profession Yun It's been about 22 years Years Pag-inagawa yeah. namin yung community service <laughs> And uh... Wait Wait, wait. Wait lang, doon sa mga nagsasabi na konyo ako magsalita. Come on, guys. Bakit niyo sinasabi konyotik ako? Hindi naman, hindi naman ako 22 years in community service. Okay, go. guys. Whoa, 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 wait. Okay, balikan natin na. Balikan natin. Guys, come on. <laughs> Leloy, bro, come. Bro, come on. Come on, bro. I'm an executive of uh, Bitag Media Unlimited Incorporated. You know. The trade name is uh, Bitag Multimedia Network. You know. We've been uh, in this kind of business for the last 22 years. Yes. Yours. So one of the things that we specialize is... Uh... Wait lang. Di ba sabi niya Tagalog? Di ba, di ba sabi niya Tagalog? Bakit napunta na sa California, Florida? Yan, yeah, okay, okay. Ano, konyotik with Riz? Sino ako? O si, ba- si Baby Tag? Si sabi niyo konyotik, hindi naman ako ganyan mag-ingles ha. Tingnan niyo, panorin niyo mga interview natin sa CNN, BBC. Hindi naman ako ganyan mag-ingles. 22 years in community service. Yeah. Tagalog ba tayo or English? Sige, Tagalog tayo. And then wala pang two minutes, puro English na. Sige. Sige lang, sige lang. Community service. Community service, yeah. We call it community service because it's not public, not in the public service. service. Of course, of course. Why community service? Why community service? Because not public because service. Because we're not public servant. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the fourth. Eh? Gets you guys. Hindi private. Hindi. Community service because hindi public service. Bakit ka mo pub, uh, community service? Dahil nga, hindi public service. Gets you guys. Nakaka-relate ba kayo? Makabol ba kayo guys? Ma- ano to ha? Okay to, okay to. I like this. Stay. And being in the Ford Estate, we're supposed to be agnostic, which means our job is to you know. tell the truth. Seek the truth and tell the truth, but then again, we yeah. realize after helping a lot of people for the last 22 years, Tagalog. <laughs> they keep coming back. Broken system. You. In other words, you keep helping them, you, you're not solving the problem because our job is to tell yes. the truth. Seek the truth and tell the truth. And so we decided to be advocate by being part of the solution you... to the problem. Yeah. And that's all began. That's, that's it. the reason why we're here. That's true. And the reason is there's got to be change. Change is coming. <laughs> natutugunan yung mga problema ang itinutulog. O oh, yun na. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. 
uh, the possibility of having three pulpos in the Senate <laughs> is not a long shot. So given that Senator Rafi is already there, what will make you a different pulpo? Well, you have to watch carefully. We are brothers. You know. Isa lang ang doon dumadalo sa ugat namin. So, yeah. Public service. It's true, that's true. Because, because I have a different discipline. True, I'm true. I'm a communicator. I listen. Nakikinig ako. Pinakikinggan ko. And FYI, we have solved a lot of problems. You know. Through legislators who came to us. Mm -hmm. And act like partner because we became their resource persons. Case study. Wow, okay. And a lot of laws, and I don't want to talk about it, but if you want, we can have a long conversation some other time, and we will present to you when even the laws that passed. Passed, yeah. Because, because. In those cases, na na, kinuha ng legislatura, right. lower house, right. Pumasa. It's upper house. True, true. One of which, lower house, latest upper house. Nice. After the sauna, na naging topic na ipunersenta ng pangulo, and we're glad because boom sa babayon, has something to do with banking and the scamming, which we have a lot of those cases. Nakipagtulungan sa amin ang lower lower house. Lower house. The chairman of the lower house, I think, chairman sa banking Bank. is uh, Congressman Erwin Chang. You. And there were <laughs> there are a lot of laws in the gastronomic. <laughs> <laughs> sino, sino congressman yan? Hindi <laughs> ko, sino? Wala. Lower house, guys, chairman of the lower house. Okay. Uh, naging topic na ipinusenta ng Pangulo. And we're glad because boom, sa baba yun. Has something to do with banking and the scamming, which we have a lot of those cases. Nakipagtulungan sa amin ang lower, lower house. Lower house, yeah. The chairman of the lower house, I think, si, uh, sa banking, was uh, Congressman Erwin Chen. Oh, and there were hey. there are a lot of laws na gusto namin kasi ito yung a lot of laws yung yeah. metro yung namin action center a lot of you don't know that so now mm. I'm introducing myself to you sa pangangampanya well <clears throat> it could highlights by the way to I'll just because refer. first I'm independent and uh, with due respect to my brother Erwin he is with the administration and so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what party you are because I've always felt that we're beholden to the people. And that's the reason why I didn't want to be with any party because I'm a journalist. I'm supposed to be agnostic. Mm. Beholden to the people. Agnostic the guy. comes only second. Mm. Either you told the line because you, you, you believe that the, you know, the platform or the whatever's the program or projects right. that comes along that's being put on the table. Anything else? Yo, and guys. Guys, talagang totoo yung sinasabi ni Leloy pala ng Ibiano Warehouse because, okay, chairman of banking sector. And Tagalog tayo guys or English? <laughs> Loko di talaga si, you know, si Bitag. Alright, alright. So this is it guys. If we were to believe some of the service, which I think are quite reasonable, uh, we're not gonna have one, we're not gonna have two, we're gonna have three um, Tulfos in the Senate now, obviously, I can see in some of the questions some people are asking about, you know, issues na, ano, yung potential uh, taga-US patomato or whatever. Because, you know, the accent is very California. So, uh, uh, well, so far, Erwin is the congressman. Rafi is the senator. So, probably, I don't think any serious problem down the road, right? Anyways, guys, um, we had a long uh, series of conversations from two years ago pa with Leloy. Uh, with, with Ronald, among other, uh, others, kung saan sinabi namin, it's just a matter of time before the tool for skulls to go for gold because this is their moment. Now, I wrote an article about this, the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Let me just read some of this. Para medyo gabi na, medyo late na. I haven't uh, recovered 100%. But uh, the title is The Meteoric Rise of the Toolful Brothers. All right. Uh, kung saan, I look at the number of factors that may explain uh, why the Tulfos... I mean, given that they're doing well, but why are they doing so well, right? At least as far as the surveys are concerned, as far as their electability is concerned. Now, ibang usapan na whether they're the possible, best possible leaders or eto ba talagang kailangan ng ating bansa or whatever. Now, ako, tatlong main observations ko. First of all, it's all about political branding. Because if you look at it, the individual traits of the siblings, Irvin as a more soft-spoken one, 
Rafi as the more statesman-like one, and Ben as the more edgy and gritty one. Again, right? There's the Tulva brand and all the controversy and everything that comes in with that. Panorin na lang yung mga critics and all. But it looks like if you look at the service, all of them seem to make very little difference in terms of their individual differences pagdating sa voters. Kasi ang tinitingnan ng voters is yung Tulva brand. But what's up with the Tulva brand, which by the way has been built over decades, by not one but multiple brothers, starting with Mon Tulfo, who interestingly is now out of the question. But parang may bunong Trump Trump, who's interestingly out of the question right now, right? Um, second, the Tulfos are the latest iteration of what political scientists and sociologists call penal populism, namely ordinary folks' desperate yearning for personalistic solutions to systemic gaps in our broken judicial system. Sa madaling salita. Nakikita sila bilang mga saviors dahil marami sa ating kababayan ay na, nawawala ng, uh, ng, ng, ng uh, tiwala sa ating hustisya, right? sa ating justice system. As a good friend of ours back in the day, si the late uh, you know, um, Seldran, um, Carlos Seldran said, Carlos Seldran said um, our justice system is more of an injustice system. At sa aking palagay, and that comes from, God bless his soul, someone who was, you know, privileged, who, you know what, connections, celebrity, and all of that. And yet, Carlos was eventually forced out of the country and he had to settle for Madrid, even though he loved to be in Manila, to stay in the country, and loved to be a bridge between our uh, Espanol uh, culture and history and, you know, contemporary Philippines. And and, and uh, we always miss Carlos Sendran. You may disagree with what he did back in the day. I personally disagree. I'm quite a more socially conservative person. I have, I'm very sensitive with matters of religious sensibility among other things, as a matter of respect, among other things, but all kudos to Carlos Eldran, I think, um, putting aside what I believe was not the right thing to do, but he has his explanation. Sabi niya kasi biglang umulan, kaya pumasok siya. You know, the whole Padre Damaso thing, di ba? Um, uh, anyway, but if someone as privileged, someone as with his celebrity, was so critical of our justice system, imagine, ano yung kalagayan ng ating mga kababayan na who have no celebrity, who have no resources, who have no proper lawyers, at wala silang takas. At alam natin, just to give you some crazy numbers, I know this by heart because I research about this to understand the rise of Duterte. So if you look at my book, The Rise of Duterte, which Duterte also read, but I'm sure he didn't really read it because boy, pa tayo. <laughs> Among other things. Um, I have a picture of Duterte reading it. Um, sobrang garapalan yung problema sa ating sistema. Did you know na lampas sa kalhate na mga tao sa ating mga preso ay never convicted of any crime? Ang tawag po sa kanila ay pre-trial detainees. In fact, the most famous of them is Leila Dalima who spent more than what? Six years sa kulungan even if never siya convicted by any court. So imagine if someone like Leila Dalima again, a, a person of uh, profile times 100 in 2016 or 17, someone interviewed by CNN, BBC, someone who's seen as one of the leaders of opposition, if she was kept in jail for six years without any conviction, imagine mo gano ka hopeless yung sitwasyon ng ibang mga kababayan natin. Who, by the way, constitute more than 50%. So kung pumunta ka sa preso, lampas sa 50% nandyan ay pre-trial detainee people. Never sila convicted. And wala silang pag-asa na magkaroon ng justicia or clarity anytime soon. Guys, ito po ay isang, it's, it's scandalous. I mean, it's an abomination. This is a miscarriage of justice on, a, on an apocalyptic level, right? Akalain mo, lampas sa 50%. In fact, base sa reports na nakita natin back in 2017-18, that's the second or third worst in the world yung number of pre-trial detainees natin. Now, pag tinignan natin yung um, overcrowdedness ng ating korte, base sa mga numero na nakita natin, again, these are in my different works, including with my Cambridge University Press book, chapter book, uh, Dutertismo, you can check that, Penal Populism is the title, it came out two years ago. Kung titignan mo yun, guys, you know, every judge in the Philippines on average has to handle more than half a thousand cases a year. Sobrang overloaded ang mga, judge, mga judges in our country. And marami sa ating mga judges, right? Uh, I, I overwhelmed. 
underpaid, underprotected. In fact, Moka Uson's father was a judge at pinatay siya ng mga criminals. Uh, dahil akala ng mga criminals or na-assume nila na matatalo sila doon sa kaso nila. So, pinatay yung tatay ni Moka Uson. Kaya Moka Uson became who she became. Eventually, including, became a pro Duterte supporters and kill the criminals kind of person. Dahil yan sa kanyang trahedya. Uh, nung panahon ng kanyang kabataan, nung pinatay ang kanyang ama na judge. I, and I can give you more and more numbers. Gano kaliit yung budget ng ating judiciary compared sa budget ng ibang mga department ng ating bansa. So, sobrang, sobrang kulang. Yung kapasidad, yung investments, at sobrang kulang yung personal natin. Pagdating sa, uh, you know, ating justisya, ating sistema ng justisya. Kaya ang dami sa ating mga kababayan ay agribyado. Ang dami sa ating mga kababayan ay umaasa pa rin na magkaroon ng justisya, pero nakawalan na talaga sila ng pag-asa. In fact, we have many cases of, of Filipinos who eventually had to settle the case outside the court because they couldn't wait anymore for the court to settle it because it was like 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. And we had many cases of miscarriage of justice, including investigations na pinakita, na marami sa ating mga kababayan na nilagay dati sa death row ay actually inosente. Some reports suggest more than 60-70%, up to 90% potentially of people who were put on a death row before ay inosente sila. Hindi lang sila nagkaroon ng uh, tamang uh, uh, you know, uh, lawyers, circumstantial evidence were taken too seriously, among other things. So, sobrang, yeah, it's a broken system. Actually, Ben Tulfo is right. We have a broken system. But, instead of solving this problem systematically, dahil sa sobrang lalim nung, nung frustration ng ating kababayan, hindi na, hindi na sila nakapaghintay ng systematic institutional reform. Right? Meaning, unti-unti, uh, palakin mo yung personal, unti-unti, siguraduin mo na uh, yung isang judge lang, hindi 700 cases a year, unti-unti, siguraduin mo na yung mga pre-trial detainees, hindi kailangan lagay sa kulungan, siguro you can have a separate uh, facilities for them or make sure na kung talaga hindi serious crime yan it's bailable enough in fact there's some crimes that uh i, I think estafa for instance right na non bailable from one, my understanding but you know but probably you know there has to be a lighter approach to it right or or you're supposed to, let's say let's non bailable and then you lock your account mo so hindi mo mabaray mga nagutang sa so you get stuck as a pre trial detainee and then it's it's a it's a monstrous business situation right so Ito po yung katotohanan ng sistema natin. Kaya ito mga tulfos, they tap into that, essentially, search for a messiah, for a personalistic solution dun sa mga systematic, malalim uh, na problema sa ating hustisya, right? They, they need a face to the solution that they're desperately yearning for. So in a way, sisimptom sila ng problema. At yan ang disagreement natin dun sa mga kabilang channel, yung mga kapatid natin na galit na galit sa mga tulfos, sa mga other things. Ang tanong ko naman, okay, naintindihan ko na galit kayo sa mga tulfos dahil minumura yung mga polis or ganun. Mali yun. Agree ako. Pero intindihan din natin saan sila galing. Alright? Uh, sila ay simptomas ng isang mas malalim na problema. Now, obviously, Ben Tulfo has his own more gritty, aggressive way of dealing with it. Perhaps Raffian or definitely Erwin in a less uh, confrontational way. Um, if you bothered, for instance, to actually follow each of these brothers and the difference there. Yes, the term I use actually for that is grievance politics. But this is about penal populism, meaning uh, a populism that taps into frustration with our penal or penitentiary system. Kasi sobrang broken yung penitentiary system natin. The third factor na discuss natin dito mga ating mga kameta, uh, and I mentioned in my uh, in my work. So actually, I built dun sa literature, yung analysis natin of the rise of Duterte. And for me, Duterte was a perfect forerunner for the Tulfos. The Duterte showed what the Tulfos could achieve, considering how the Tulfos, A, masikat sila kay Duterte 10-15 years ago, pasa sila sa NCR, they have many connections, they have Mindanao connections, Zambonga connection, Rafi told me that I think they have even Ilocano connection, Batak connection, and then of course, they're, they're, they're very much NCR-based, national celebrities. And, and this is the third level. Actually, bizarrely, and this is what I find actually bizarre. Ito yung, nakaka, ito yung interesting dun sa mga ibang kabilang channel na parating inatak si Tulfo, pero tahimik kay Digong. Or hindi masyadong kinikritay Digong dahil abogado siya parang that's ridiculous to me. But anyway, going back to this. Um, in fairness naman sa mga Tulfos, hindi sila pro-EJK. Alright? They don't believe in extrajudicial killings or violent extrajudicial solutions to fundamental problems of justice in the country. In some ways, their approach you could say it's hyperjudicial, meaning use personal 
confrontational approach, calling out uh, supposedly abusive officials in order to make sure na yung mga kaso ng mga kawawang mga kababayan natin na hindi binibigyan ng attention, ay bibigyan na attention. For critics, including some of my students who wrote up, one of my students back in the day wrote, I think was one of, one of the best papers I've checked of a student. Sigura, diretsong uno na yan. Sobrang galing yung, sabi niya, tulfoism, trial by publicity. Right? In fact, for me, now it's more like publicity by trial. Right? In fact, digong is more publicity by trial. By fake courts, cases, and etc., pinasikat niya sarili niya, performative. But in this case, ang criticism sa kanya is trial by publicity. But nevertheless, let's not forget, as far as Tulfos are concerned, it's not a call for extrajudicial approach or extrajudicial killings at the level of Duterte. So as controversial as their approach is, it's nowhere close to deadliness and anti-constitutional nature of what Duterte stands for. Does that mean that they're necessarily the best choice forward? Does that mean that after everything we saw with Duterte, dapat silang bobotoin mo? Naintindihan ko yung skepticism. Naintindihan ko yung skepticism. Pero ang in-explain ko dito is bakit dapat maintindihan natin bakit sila ganun kasikat. Dahil nga, sa dami ng ating mga kaubayan na walang tiwala sa ating sistema, sa judicial system natin. Let me take a break, guys. I just need to get my charger pala, paubos pala to. Kanina pa ako nag-work kasi dito sa laptop ko. Eh. time go off na yata tayo one second guys one second sorry about that sorry sorry about that sorry about that Okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. Now let's go dito sa second part na ating discussion. Pasensya na. Uh, Okay, okay, ito na, ito na, ito na. Gulo na, gulo na. Okay, pasensya na, pasensya na. Alright. Uh, okay. Dami natin pag-usapan. Okay, pag-usapan natin ito. Now, let's go to the second part of our discussion, guys. Ito naman, pag-usapan naman natin si Lenny Robredo. I think today was a very important day in many ways because nakita natin na, ito na, final na, na si Vice President Lenny Robredo is running for not for national office, but for local office. At yun po yung sinasabi natin for a very long time, na malabo na tumakbo si uh, Lenny Robredo for national office anytime soon. If anything, kung titignan mo yung kanyang announcement today, it looks like she might not run for any national office for, en- for the foreseeable future. Right? For the foreseeable future. So, I just find that very interesting. Right, that that uh, the the vice president would emphasize something about her future plan. So, just for the sake of uh, evidence items, so eto yung speech ni Mam Lenny. Kanina nung tinanong siya about, so what is the long term plan? What's the big plan? Right. So actually, in fairness, if I'm not mistaken, dun sa isang RRM or RNR episode natin. All right. Um, the episode natin with Ronald Liamas, um, there we discussed the, the the possible reasons na hindi tatakbo si Lenny Robredo for the presidency or national office at the 2028 level. Precisely because naiwala tayo na si Ma'am Lenny Robredo stands for kind of a sincere and uh, 
sincere and focused governance.